Cabbage is just, you know, just leaves upon leaves upon leaves upon leaves. Goes like that. Wow. That's how. Wow. That's how the baby pops out. What? Babies come from cabbage patches. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Croak and Crow podcast. Ah, 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 ah. I am Spencer Cartier. I'm a Cabbage Patch doll. Which one? I never had one, so I wouldn't know even where to begin. Okay. And this here is Frank Hoods Up. Looking good as always. Hands up. Hands up. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? It's a beautiful Thursday, my favorite day of the week, as you know. Beautiful Thursday. It's a beautiful Thursday. Thursday. I don't know how, how, what it's like in your neck of the woods, but around here, 60 degrees. Thank you, Hashem. I, uh, I don't know. Should you be thanking God I, for the weather? I thank God for everything. Good point. Touche. Have gratitude for every, everything. Yeah. Thank you for the cold. I can go sledding. Thank you for the warmth. I can wear a t-shirt. <laughs> thank you for the clothes. Thank you for the t-shirt that I can wear. Yeah. Thank you for you. Yeah, thank you for our viewers. Thank you to our viewers. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening wherever you are listening from. And sharing. We have sharers. 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 We do. We have it all. And that's why I love shareholders. It. That's what I love. <laughs> that's what I love about Thursdays. It's just a day of thanks. I feel like Thursday, it's like every Thursday is like a mini Thanksgiving. Oh. Uh. Because, you know, Thanksgiving falls on a Thursday. It does, every year. And I just feel, something about, like, the, even, like, the TH. Yeah. It's very, like, I feel like the TH is just one big hug. Thankful. Thankful. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for Thursday. Um, like Tom, thanks. How about Thur, Thur, what else starts with the TH? Um, Thorn. Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall. All good TH words. Listen, it is Feb it's Thursday and, and it's February and it's the 17th day of February. We're coming up. Yeah, because Tuesday. February coming up to Tuesday. Yeah, we're coming up on Tuesday. Meaning? Oh, the two, 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 Just two, the two, most two, important two. Tuesday of the century. And we'll miss it. Maybe we should do it. Let's get rid of Friday's podcast. Hear me out. Okay. We're, we'll nix Friday's podcast just so we can have a special Tuesday podcast. Because yeah, in our lifetime, it's the only time it's going to happen. Why not? What do you say? Say goodbye to Friday next week. I say to to loo to Friday. All right, perfect. To loo. You'll miss one Dr. Seuss day, but instead you'll get. No, <sighs> we won't miss a Dr. Oh yeah, we will. That's we, fine. We're not going to do fine. three podcasts a week. Let's no, not get crazy. no, no, no. I was just saying, wouldn't we make Dr. Seuss on Tuesday? Because he, Dr. Seuss, was very two to two to two. No, nah, that day has to be more than just a gimmick. That's kind of stressful. Yeah. Get stressed. I don't like getting stressed. Well, so yeah, what else? What else is going on on this Thursday? Because it's not Tuesday. It's not Tuesday. It's Thursday, Tuesday. February seventeenth, and it is National Cabbage Day. Oh, is it? Yeah. So they so they tell me. That's fun. So they re, re, so they wrote to you me. You probably ate a lot of cabbage as a kid growing up in an Irish. I love cabbage. I love cooked cabbage. I didn't so much have the raw cabbage, uh, as as in a coleslaw. I wasn't R. Well, that's German, isn't it? Yeah. Or is that? No, I'm thinking of sauerkraut. Oh, yeah. Sauerkraut is boiled cabbage. Pickled cabbage. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, coleslaw? I don't know. Maybe in the Caribbean? Nah, it's too cold. Doesn't it be refrigerated? Well, it's like a cold salad. Like it's a Coleslaw is chopped cabbage and mayonnaise. Okay. I don't think they have mayonnaise in the Caribbean. <laughs> I would say it's like English or something. No, French. Coal. Slaw. I don't know. Slavic. Do you know what coal cannon is? No. Coal cannon is Irish and it's when you boil potatoes and cabbage and you mash them all up together. Mm. But uh, yeah, I was brought up on cabbage. Cabbage is all over the world. Very stuffed cabbage. Uh, have you ever had stuffed cabbage? No. We never made it, but so many cultures make it. Polish and Middle Eastern and Asian and take cabbage, you boil it. And just like you ever see like stuffed grape leaves, yeah, it's like that, but it's cabbage instead, and it has like a meat mixture, and you roll it up, and then you. Here in Philadelphia, they put it in a dish, and I think they use like a actually like a tomato based sauce, um, for it to it kind of like it's a steamy dish. It's more more than a baked, yeah, crispy dish. But anyway, um, in Ireland, especially um, during 
times of great famine. poverty. Well, yeah, the famine too, but even before that. Uh, cabbage is n- nutrient rich and inexpensive, so they ate lots and lots and lots, like lots, like 65 pounds per person per year. Um, potatoes and cabbage, you could get a uh, potato farm and you couldn't. And then if you if you were super duper duper lucky, you could get some pork and um, put that with. So St. Patrick's Day is coming up literally in one month. Yeah, wait, I thought it was, you'd get corned beef. Okay, so corned beef would be way too expensive for the people, the farmers and the... not They weren't even farmers, they were just working the land. But anyway, corned beef is corned just... Corned beef and cabbage. Corned beef is, is a preserved beef and it's called corned beef because the salt the salt crystals were so big they looked like corn. Ah. So the British called it corned beef, but it was just salted beef. That would you could get it in Ireland, but you would be too poor to get it. When they came to America, the Irish immigrants who came to America um, brought their brought their thing. So they you would have potatoes and cabbage, and then they would have like bacon or ham. Mm. But the Jewish people in New York, where the Irish immigrants came as well, they were providing um, corned beef that was very inexpensive. Oh, uh, because they were having it canned and stuff. Yeah, they would just because make it. And yeah. I guess they knew the recipe and the tactics and. And so the Irish, the Irish Americans. So corned beef and cabbage was more of an um, Irish American thing. Right. Than an Irish Irish. A lot of stuff that we do as Irish people in America is Irish American. Well, it's its own thing. It's like Italian American. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It's an, it's its own culture. Right. And um, I think it should be known as its own culture because there is so many differences. Right. There's just as many differences as there are similarities. Like you see that. I feel like you see it more prevalently in Italian American mm-hmm. just because they have more of an out there culture. Right. And so you see things, it's like, oh, right. that's Italian American. But the same applies to, I would imagine, just about every culture. Yeah. Because America is just one big melting pot. Right. So I definitely grew up on Irish cabbage, which is just cabbage. And I love it. A lot of people don't. It, it could be um, odorous as you're cooking it, but I don't care. <laughs> Um, when I, when I first saw Cabbage Day, you know what I thought of? What? You just showed me that restaurant and remember, <laughs> we were like, is that cabbage on the walls? It was, it was this restaurant in outer space. I don't know. I just thought of cabbage. Oh remember? yeah. Down in Epcot, they have this cool space restaurant. And what you do is you get into an elevator and then you're looking and obviously they're not real windows. Hate to spoil it for you. It's just <laughs> screens, but you see yourself flying up from epcot you see all of epcot and then you fly up into the atmosphere you see all of florida and the world and then boom you're at a space station and you get out in this entire restaurant all of the windows you're seeing a view of the earth i think it's sick if i had to guess it's probably worth a small fortune oh yeah but um cool and then yeah so while you're walking through you see little little vegetables that they brought <laughs> up to the outer space cabbage head so that's why i was a cabbage patch doll. Good for you. I, I never had a cabbage patch doll. They were the the hot item at the time. And um, Spot so, back in the 40s. Yeah. And I don't know anything about it. That's the end of that story. There's also, um, today's February 17th, I think maybe till the weekend. Pope Francis is doing an international conference. Um, I think it's for priests. You know, I'm always interested in what Pope Francis has to always. say. So he's telling the priests... That those who are not close to God in prayer, close to their bishop and other priests, and immersed in the lives of their people, they are simply clerical functionaries or professionals of the sacred. Ooh. Yeah. So he's saying, like, you got to stop distancing yourself from your people and their experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I have something for you. Where did it go? Um, so Pope Francis, he's there. He's saying all sorts of gems. We love him. Um, we love him. He's, he's he's the goat. He's everything. He's everything. But this is he today. He quoted a, an African proverb. Um, I was just going to let you read it. I will read it. <clears throat> Pope Francis cited the African proverb. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go with others. That's Ooh, it. Ooh, I like that. Because he was talking to priests and he was saying, basically, stop isolating yourself yeah. from the people. Um, Oh, man. I like that. But 
I have to find it. There was, um, you know, with the whole Ukraine Russia thing. Yeah. There was like a United Nations conference, and uh, one of the African countries, they like gave just like this proverb for it, and um, it was so good. And it was like everyone else was saying like, we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do this. And this one African, um, what ambassador? I don't know who speaks yeah. of those. Mm-hmm. Like what he said, it said something to do with elephants, and like the only person. When two elephants fight, the only loser is the grass or something. Oh, wow. And something like that. I'll find it. But I was like, okay. Okay, whatever country that was. Yeah, that's a really good one. Even if you're not saying it correctly. I'm already I'm already liking the sounds of it. Yep. So, um, yep, yep, yep. that's all I have. Cabbages and, and Pope Francis, I think. I don't know where he's, he is. But I think it was a Canadian bishop or whatnot that put the thing together. He's the coolest. Um, all right, guys. It is Thursday. Enough of your... Actually, no. Not enough. I could talk about propranes all day. Cabbage, though. Over it. I don't eat cabbage. It's Thursday. Just simply the greatest day of the week. Quite simply. And what we do on Thursday is we have a little thing. Just a little thing. <laughs> called Walk Through Thursday. Thursday. Roll the intro, please. Welcome back. Hope you're having fun. Cuz walk through Wednesday just begun. What is up, guys? It is walk through Thursday. Can you believe it? It's already been seven days since the last walk through Thursday. Yeah. That's incredible. You got a squeaky chair. <laughs> I'll have to oil it or grease it. Oil. What, 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 what? The squeaky wheel gets the grease? Yeah. But I think that's just more for alliteration than for the correct term there's no g's the e- squeak squeak grease, grease. Squeak okay e. squeak wheel. <laughs> anyway guys it is walk through thursday and what we do here on walk through thursday is we open up the bible bible's open thank you and once the bible is open we have so many possibilities of what we can do but what we choose to do is to pick a verse a lot just a little a little snippet if you will mm-hmm. a snippet of the bible and we try to break it down we're not talking about grandiose stories here we're not talking about from in the beginning to the, amen right we are talking about one little paragraph mm-hmm. no matter how big or small yeah and we try to get little spiritual significance through every word it's fun you know not 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 everything needs to be an entire story yeah not everything needs to be a passage that you've you've heard over the ages mm-hmm. sometimes there's the the, the, entire, it's the entire bible you know that's like, you ever like watch a movie and, or, and it's like what's your favorite part it's like i can't pick the whole part yeah the whole the whole movie that's <laughs> where, where, where that's why the bible is right it's all spiritually significant mm-hmm. so why not just pick a random thing you might have never heard it before let's talk about it yeah so we're going to go through it sentence by sentence line by line word by word letter by letter and we're just going to enjoy it, just like we enjoy cabbage. <laughs> yeah, layer by layer. The layer cabbage by head. layer, like an onion. Yeah, like people always say onion. They never say cabbage. Yeah. Cabbage is just, you know, just leaves upon leaves upon leaves upon leaves. Just like that. Wow. That's, how, wow. that's how the baby pops out. What? Babies come from cabbage patches. Oh, is that what cabbage patch kids came from? Yeah. Oh. You didn't know that a baby came from a cabbage patch? No, is that like a saying? Yeah, it's like in the old days when uh, when a child would say, um, where do babies come from? And, you know, there was no sex ed yeah, in so schools say, or wherever else. So you'd say the stork yeah, brought the baby. That one. Or, um, yeah, you're born in a cabbage patch. Oh. So the, these dolls were cabbage patch dolls. It's like baby. They were very cushy and gushy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Hand it over. What are we reading today? We are reading out of our favorite book of the Bible, it seems. Acts. Why do we keep reading from it? Yeah. I am just being led by the Lord, so I can't even apologize can't. or take a bow. You're, you're simply the messenger. <laughs> you are the receptionist. I'm the receptionist. Like, you, it just starts going into the printer, and you're like, okay. That's right. What are we reading today? <laughs> Fine by me. We are reading Acts 17, 24 to 27. Is it a good one? It's the best. Yeah, best. Let's get into it. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And he is not served by human hands 
as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations, that they should inhabit the whole world, the whole earth. I'm messing up. That's fine. Eh. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Perfect. And then I give you the little back story. What's the back story? Back story is that Paul is in Athens. As he, you know, he travels around and around and around. And yeah. At this point, he's in Athens and he's walking around, and um, he's seeing that they're very religious, and they and they have lots of altars and idols. Yeah. And um, he's walking, but around. not Christian religious. No. The Greek gods. Um. Well, as a matter of fact, so he's walking around, and the philosophers are taking note of him because you know, at that time. That's all they did all day was hang out and talk about yeah, ideas. Yeah, like Socrates. Yeah. So they they called him a babbler, at least in this um in this um translation. What is this babbler talking about? Like, what are you what are yeah. you saying? And then some of them were like, it sounds like he's talking about a foreign god because he was talking about Jesus, right? So, um, but they were interested because they because they're open to the they, idea yeah. of uh, they're polytheistic. Yeah. So they're not like so they're like we're at, we actually want to know what you're talking about yeah. because maybe we. We would like to know, uh, we would like to be part of that. Anyway, he said um, that he saw an altar and on the altar, it says to an unknown God. So he said, um, you're ignorant of the very thing that you worship. Mm. You are, you're worshiping God and you don't even know it because by, by saying this is for the God, but you're not acknowledging who the God is, um, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you. Um, you're going to learn today, I'm Paul I'm going to proclaim to you. So that's um, very easy to find. That's the If you look at Acts 17, the little lead up is what I just talked about. Yeah. And now we're going to, what you're going to talk about. What am I going to talk about? What Paul told this, what you, <laughs> what you just read is what Paul told these people when they said, we're listening. Yeah. What? The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. So start there. Yeah. That's the first thing he said to them when he had to find words to explain to them without, I guess, getting them too mad. They're already calling him a babbler. So he doesn't want to say like, I'm going to strike down everything you're doing. Yeah. He's building on it, I guess. Yeah. Well, so like he's explained to, to, so I think what you need to first do is look at Athens, right? This is, you know, the the Greek gods. Athens, by the way, beautiful. It was it was way before its way before its time. Super advanced architecture, and they'd have these grandiose, oh. um, grandiose temples, temples. Okay, with like the uh, the statue of Athena Nike. Okay, which was a larger than life depiction of Athena. You know, uh, Athena Nike, which is like the goddess. War, yeah, the, the there was like different versions mm-hmm. of Athena. I think this was like the triumphant warrior one. Whatever. It's, it's like 100 feet tall and you're looking at it and that's what's so grand. It's like, like look at what we're worshiping. It's And what Paul is saying is the God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands. And so he's saying no matter, it doesn't matter how grandiose. You can never be as – you can never yeah. build it as big as it needs to be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And human hands can never – um encapsulate what what is god right to them it's like when they live in such a society of i know what you know i i know what athena looks like i know what hercules looks like or who else you know i never know these gods i told you this i I don't know roman or greek i never know they're similar like i'm pretty sure hercules might be roman no he's greek what is like path 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 something python python (laughs) yeah Whatever. Pythagoras? But I don't Pythagoras, know. I don't, yeah, I, I, think don't, that's one. I don't know any of it. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. So that's the other thing, and which is interesting because yeah. in you know this Greek philosophy also, mm-hmm. it's you are meant to serve the God. And so you, like, you don't want to anger the gods. And right. It's still that. It's sort of... In a more polytheistic way, 
that kind of Old Testament what Jesus came to change, which is like the offerings and right. you would go there and, and, and you would worship these idols, which you know, they didn't see as idols, so as gods, and you're serving them. And it's, a, it's like, does this please the gods? Does this anger the gods? And he's saying as if he needed anything. I think that's the biggest part of it. Because like yeah. you, 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 we do, someone will scratch their head and say, but we do serve God. Right. But this is like more of a literal like, where his like where his servants and it's like as if he needed anything right as if he needed uh, like human hands to help him do anything he, right he, um rather he gives everyone life and breath and everything else and so it's i think juxtaposing that he doesn't need anything yeah yet he gives everything yeah i love that because when you or when they were at that time praying for uh, especially when, okay, so they said to him like, oh, who's this new God you're talking about? Who's this foreign God? Maybe he can give us something. Yeah. Maybe he's the one that we should be, you know, sacrificing the the calf to or the virgin or whatever. Um, interestingly, he or, the God I'm talking about, what do you mean you, you want to see if he'll give you something? If you're walking around, he he gave you life. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are the gift of God that's yes, walking around where they're, yeah. they're starting like, okay, we're here. Well, and yeah. now what can the God give us? And then that is the other thing about, um, you know, cause they see with this like polytheistic, it's, they live in a world where there's also gods. Right. And they're the humans and they're the gods. Yeah. And it's like, this is like, no, you're the humans because he's the God. Right. And it's like, gave everyone life and breath and everything else. It's not, Oh, I want I want the gods to notice me. It's right. God created right. Me. And then if you say that, life and breath, so that's me. And then everything else, you know, it goes to the first one that says um, that he made the world and everything in it, and that he doesn't live in the temple. So again, you're here because the gift was already granted, and the temple of the Lord is the earth he created. So like. We're underneath the sky, the oh, yeah. trees, the sun. It's it. The world is his temple. From one man, he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times and histories and the boundaries of their lands. So this is obviously starting with. That's Genesis, right? Yeah, Genesis, Adam. Okay. Um, starting with Adam and say, and once it's just to your point of saying. When does this it start? Was, this was all designed. Like th this was never a human and, and a God living at the same time. This is, he created the beginning. Right. Like, is what he's saying. And oh yeah. I see what you're saying. So I'm saying, so I'm here and I'm praying to this idol and I'm saying, what can you do for me? Or when will, when will the gifts start? And I said, it already started because you're alive. And, and what you're bringing up is. It began before me. Yeah. Because my father was alive and his father and his father all the way back to Adam. Yeah. Okay. It's like, it's not a coexisting. It's, there's the creator and the created. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this is like, he marked out their appointed times of history and their boundaries of their lands. And I think that just speaks on the, um, what's the word? Omnipresence? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Let's just go with it. <laughs> Omnipresence of like, it, it's, it's going so far as to. Everything that's been set up mm -hmm. has been set up by God. Right. Like, like everything has been planned out and, and done. It's this idea of just how grandiose, because you have to imagine what he's doing with these Athens people is not debating. He's catching them up on. Right. Paul was, 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 you know, like after Jesus. So he's the end of the Bible. Right. He's catching them up on who God is in, you know, like a, a, a paragraph. Right. And so he's trying to let them know that like, because then they'll say, "Oh, well, when did he? When was he created? Like, when did when did we come in the mix?" He's saying, "Like, he literally created the first man, right. and then everything that happened after that, up to you being here, standing in Athens, has been in right. the in the script, if you will." And I, and I forgot to say too that um, uh, usually we're reading letters from Paul that Paul wrote. Acts is Saint Luke writing about what Paul was doing. Yes. It's, yes. Good little plug there. <laughs> okay. Luke. And then 27. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. Now, I like that. I like it a lot. 
I'll read it again. I liked it so much. Okay. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. You got anything to say about that? Well, I just, I find that that's really Paul answering the altar that he found that said to an unknown God. Yeah. And I, I like this is just a line I like so much because it answers the question of like and so, so with when, when you when you believe in a monotheistic religion, the one question that you always get is monotheistic like, one God. One monotheistic means you believe in one God. Polytheistic means you believe in multiple gods. He's telling a bunch of polytheistic people to be monotheistic. The thing about polytheism is you can have you know there's like drunkard gods and there's the gods of war right. and famine and right. there's gods of love and, and art All and so it's like anything that happens if they're if you know their, your town burns down that's hades attacking okay. us we got to pray to zeus to to you know protect us mm-hmm. storms and yeah, yeah okay ex- with a monotheistic god the, the main question is well, why did bad things happen mm-hmm. or, or why are we why are we in wars with other people and, yeah and it's a good question. And even, even though this doesn't, might not seem like it answers it directly, it's, he's saying he's been around and created everything. And he's like, God did this so that, or so he, well, you're not being served. Like, it's not like you need to serve him. He's serving you. He, he did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any of us. And the point is, and why do bad things happen? It's like free will and, and all that. Okay. And what's the point of free will? That, that's sort of what this is answering. Is the point of free will is that we would will seek God and perhaps reach out to Him and find Him, though He's not far from any of us, right? So it's like even though God is with us, God, even though we have the choice to go towards God or or, or not, go towards the idea of love and being spiritual or not, or it, to name Him on the altar or not, yeah, yeah. it is free will, but the reason he gave that is so that we have the free will to reach out to him mm. and whether or not we do that though is what the last sentence says is he's not far from any one of us like you can never stray away from god you can stray away from be like having conversations with him yeah. but you can never be lost and look around so he's i love that he's all he's always there i love that because right he's he, though he's not far from any one of us so even if you haven't invited him to you know in, be in your heart or if you hadn't said i w- want to follow you or i want to know more about you yeah the very fact that he made you and you're his child yeah and as far yeah, as far as like the he like that whole thing you know I, we talk about parents sometimes and what i would equate it to is like you know when a kid run, runs away from home and it's like the parents let them do it but they're like following them oh you mean like fake run away no, like when they're like, try- yeah, like I'm running away. Yeah, I thought but- you meant like you're 16 and you actually got on a bus. Oh, no. I'm talking <laughs> about like when you're five. Oh, and you just, yeah, you just are. You're stomping down the street. You're, and mar- like, yeah. you're like, I'm on my own now. And like your parent is just like literally two houses down. Right. Just watching you. It's, it's like that. Like that's the idea I see of it. Mm-hmm. Of like you can never really get away. Like you can say, oh, I hate you, mom. Right. I'm leaving this house forever. And it's like, okay, but you're still being protected. Right, right. You're still being loved. Right. And if you ever want to just turn around and say, Right. Okay, I'm hungry. And say, okay, here's dinner. Right. I wonder how they took it back then. When he said those things to them. And like you said, they weren't Christian and they were probably happy in their polytheism. Well, I guess maybe stick around for next week. We might talk about Acts 28 to 29. <laughs> and then we'll see. But anywho... Well, how, do you, how do you take it? How do I take you it? You can answer it for your own self. I take it good. I'm like, whoa. You're telling me all this? I kind of like this God. And it's also like, it takes a lot of stress off you. Like, you it don't does. have to worry about, this is the God of the storm, and this is the God of the grain, and this is the... It's like, wait, he's taking care of everything? Yeah. Awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a comfort. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, and knowing that, you know, it's all, you know... He himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. Like, it's a it's a comfort rather than a. Yeah, it's not stressful at all. He's taking care of everything. You know, I always wanted a house manager. Uh, I just was not not rich enough for that. But 
you know, instead of you hiring the carpenter and you calling the gardener and you calling the, uh, why would I call but, it gardener? Yeah, but, you know? yeah. but that's what's so nice about the God that he is portraying. It's not so much that it's easy. It's that idea of, it's that idea of wanting to serve. Him. Like, obviously, like we said, does not serve by human hands, right. but it's like you, you want to do good and, and, and follow for him. It's um you know it's leading by fear or leading by love and, right. and it's like that idea that I want to make I'm not scared of making you angry but I want to make you proud and, right. and and that's what's nice about it yeah reach out for him and find him yes but that is walk through Thursday guys my favorite day hopefully your favorite day too if you uh, have any thoughts on this leave them down in the comments below if not. Tune in tomorrow for fun Dr. Seuss Friday. The last one until the following. The last one. The last one until Lent. Well, no, the that. last one until March. <laughs> so you better tune in. Yeah. But it's been real and it's been fun. Peace.